Hello and welcome to Man's Moral Moments. I've done a couple of challenges recently with Airfix starter sets, but I haven't yet done the famous, or infamous, starter set challenge, where you attempt to complete a starter model kit with only the items included, with minimal additional items. I thought I'd better get this one under my belt, and as most of these seem to be done with aircraft and tanks, both of which I've covered on my one-hour challenges, I thought I'd do something a little bit different, and venture into unfamiliar territory with a ship. Now I happen to have the Airfix Mary Rose starter set from the Lidl and Aldi Christmas promotions, so that's what I settled on. First up, the rules. A hobby knife is allowed. This, however, is the only tool permitted. Water is allowed, for both decals and thinning paints. Other extras are okay if you could reasonably find them in your home, but even so, I'm keeping these to a minimum. The important thing is that I can't use any extra additional paints or glue, just that from the kit. Now this is actually a rather nice kit, being a modern tooling with good detail for its scale and a decent decal sheet. Now the commonly accepted addition to the starter kit is a modelling knife, so I used my normal scalpel for cutting all the pieces off the sprues and any remedial work. Here you can see I'm starting off with the main hull pieces, and just cleaning up the injection gates where I've cut them off with my scalpel. Now the handbrow glue supplied can't be used straight from the tube, or you'd end up getting it everywhere, so I'm just squeezing some onto a piece of scrap board. You could also use card. Then I'm actually using the supplied brush to put the glue where I need it. But you could also use a cocktail stick or a cotton bud with the end snipped off to do the same thing. The important thing is to make sure that the glue is cleaned off the brush when you're done. Now as you can see here, there is a decent amount of detail both here, on the gun deck, and on the outer hull. The paints as supplied are too thick. So I'm going to add a little water here and mix. Again, using the supplied brush to, to get a better consistency for painting. I'm also making sure that I get all the paint in the lid mixed in, and shaking it afterwards to give me a decent starting paint. Here you can see I'm doing the same thing with the rather dark sand colour that's meant for the sails. It was a bit more separated than the brown, but it recovered well. Now I'm not going to use the colours as supplied, but I'm going to mix them to give myself some more options. As such, I'm mixing in some of the sand to the brown to give a lighter brown, which will be my base coat for all of the wood on the ship. Once happy with this, I start applying the first coat. I'm starting with the top of the ship and the anti-boarding covers, and I'm not too concerned about finish, just to get a first overall coat on. With that done, it's onto the main hull sides. Again, I just want an initial coat since the thinner paint will require a couple of coats anyway. This was repeated with the gun deck, And I'm including the cannons here too, since this is effectively acting as a primer on the plastic as well, and the gunmetal will have no issues covering this brown as it's much darker than it. Next were smaller pieces like the stern of the vessel. And then I went back and gave a second coat to ensure good coverage of the parts. Giving two or three thin coats, even with the small brush provided, does a good job of preventing brush marks on the painted finish. With those parts drying, I cut off the masts, which requires some care as these parts are quite delicate at the top. 
so I try to work down from the thinner parts of the masts to the thicker. Crow's nests came next, which I cut off and cleaned up per mast in order to prevent mixing them up. These were then glued in the same way as the other pieces, and didn't produce any problems. I then test fitted the masts in the upper hull, just to ensure all looked good. And then I proceeded to take them out and paint them, as for the other parts of the hull. Next came the start of the most problematic area in the starter set, the sails. The sails themselves are not the issue, but rather the awful paint that is supplied. This was slightly split when it came, and thinning it down to reasonable consistency gave extremely poor coverage, as can be seen here. Now the instructions actually call for the sails to be painted in the sand colour, but that was both too dark for my eye, and for what I had in mind, so I wanted to start by priming the sails with white, and ended up making a ton of extra work for myself. As you can see, I've not thinned the paint much, yet it seems to have a perfect balance between not wanting to adhere to the plastic, not giving coverage, and yet still providing visible brush strokes. After this first coat had dried, I applied a second coat, trying to ensure I brushed 90 degrees to the prior coat to smooth out any paint marks. I'd encourage you to pause the video at this point and take a guess at how many coats it finally took me to get a reasonable coverage using this paint on the sails, and then come back and see how close you got. Taking a break from the sails, I took the opportunity to put a second coat on the mast assemblies. After that, I turned my attention to the base, because I knew this would be helpful for me when I started the construction, since I could use it to put the ship on during assembly. The pieces go together without any issues, and fortunately I realised that there was a fourth cross brace to put on before the cement had set, so I added this and it certainly helps in keeping the stand aligned. The instructions call for the stand to be brown, but I went for gunmetal to reduce the amount of brown overall and make the model pop a bit more. There's also a lot of gunmetal paint, as the only other areas to use it are the cannon and the anchors. Back to the sails and time for a third coat. I think this might have actually been the fourth coat, but as I didn't film the other one, I'll give it the benefit of the doubt. In any case, it was clear that this white had the opacity level of cling film, so for the next step I decided to add some of the sand to help me. This step was painting the white areas of the hull. Using the white and sand mix, I carefully went over these areas to cover the previously painted brown hull. And it was time to go back and use this mixture to give a fourth coat to the sails. And a fifth coat. And then back to the hull for a second coat on the painted areas. A sixth coat on the sails. And then a seventh coat.
Then I went back and added just white. Then I went back and added just white to those hull areas. At this point I realised I'd missed one of the sails, so I tried an experiment with some Liquitex heavy body white acrylic. I diluted this with just water to a similar consistency as the Humbrol paint. I then went over this sail using the Liquitex paint over the initial first coat of Humbrol. Then a second coat went dry. I then added a little of the sand and did the third coat. And then finished with a fourth. Comparing the two, the Liquitex gives a much better, smoother finish and coverage with less coats. Now I wanted to make some washes, so I just used this hotel body wash with some water and a drop or two of sand paint to create an overall wash for the sails. I then did the same with some of the lightened brown to do some line washing in the folds and creases of the sails. I then added some more of the sand wash and mixed them on the sails to create some shading to add some volume to them. The great thing about using the paints in this way is that you can keep playing with them until you have the sort of result you're looking for, as they're not actually adding much pigment at a time. I made a wash of the unlightened original brown, and used this on the hull to create some dark shadows in the recesses. It was now time to come back and do some detail painting on the sails by picking out the cross beams the sails hang from. I then applied a second wash on the hull. And then I was picking out all those gunmetal pieces, the cannons and the anchors. Finally, it was time to put things together. This started by adding the gun deck to the starboard hull. And then closing that up with the port side. The stern was then added and you can see I've already added the little bit sticking out at the rear. Before all this dried, I brought in the top piece to close up the hull. It requires a bit of care and jiggling, but it fits together quite nicely. Next up was to touch up all of the edges and other areas. With all that done, it was time to move to decaling. It has to be said that the decals Airfix supply are lovely with good colour density, excellent register and virtually no excess carrier film. Given their size and how awkward this could have been, the whole process was actually pretty painless, and with some care and patience the bright, vibrant colours they supply really make the ship come alive. After the decals had completely dried overnight, I moved on to give the hull some semblance of colour modulation with an almost dry brush of lightened brown from bow to stern. I then gave the upper hull the same treatment. Before increasing the contrast here again with another wash of diluted brown. Whilst I left that to dry, I moved on to the sails and completed the mast assemblies. 
These are held on very simply with flat areas on each cross mast that are glued onto the main mast piece. The rudder was then added to the stern with a few drops of glue from a cocktail stick. The last pieces to add are all the masts. Now replete with sails onto the main hull and add the little self-adhesive flags to the tops of the two front ones. Lastly, let me thank all of my wonderful supporters before we take a look at the Finnish Mary Rose to one of Henry VIII's own compositions, Pastime with Good Company. So that was it, the starter set challenge complete. I think it's interesting to set yourself challenges like this from time to time, as it makes you think about things differently. The model itself is a lovely little thing, and I was very impressed and surprised by how well it went together and how enjoyable the build was. Being given only one brown in this set was a real challenge, and I'd have far preferred a pot of black to the gunmetal provided, which would have made creating more tonal variation much easier. A lighter colour for the sails, like a light buff, would have been preferable to the sand colour, and Humbrol really need to look at what they've done to create such a god-awful white. White should be an easy colour, as it's basically just titanium dioxide, and the experiment I did with Liquitex really showed how bad that paint was. Still, I'm rather pleased with my little Mary Rose, and I may actually return to her and add rigging, replace the existing flags and add some more, just to see what she looks like. All outside of this sort of build of course, but let me know in the comments if that's something you'd like to see in the future. In the interim, if you fancy winning this massive, so big I can't actually get it in the camera, 132nd scale model of the Eurofighter Typhoon, then you're in luck. If you become a member of the channel or my Patreon at any level, starting at just £2 a month, you get automatic entry into the Man's Model Moments monthly giveaway. In future months, I'm looking to have multiple giveaways at a time so that more of my supporters get something back from me as a way of me thanking them for their support. Higher level membership also comes with its own rewards, like stickers, this mug, and even a t-shirt. Links to all of this are in the video description below. Of course, if you're not in a position to support me in this way, but want more content, head on over to your favourite podcasting app and find Beyond the Box my new modelling podcast with my co-host Moss from Moss 6510 Models. That's all for this instalment of Man's Model Moments. If you enjoyed the video, please click the like button, subscribe to the channel for more like it, and share this video with others you think would also enjoy it. You can also follow me on Instagram, Twitter and Facebook. With that, I hope you have plenty of modelling moments of your own, and I look forward to welcoming you on the next video.